consider a couple of Cisco Catalyst switches interconnected with fiber like we see here. The interesting thing about a fiber optic cable is we typically have two strands interconnecting our devices because one device is going to transmit on one strand and it will receive on the other. For example, on switch SW1, I've got these two orange lines representing the two fiber optic strands. They're both plugging into the same switch port, but there are two strands of fiber in that connector. And the top strand on SW1 is being used for transmission, and that strand is being used for reception on switch SW2 and vice versa. The transmission or the TX strand on SW2 is the receive. It's the RX strand on SW1. And SW1 will send traffic over to SW2 using its transmit strand. And the same thing, SW2 will use its transmit strand to send traffic over to SW1. However, let's imagine that one of those strands gets damaged. There's a phenomenon in the industry known as backhoe fade, and that's where a backhoe might come and damage a fiber optic cable as it's doing some digging, or other things could cause it to happen. But the term you often hear is backhoe fade, where a fiber optic strand has been damaged by somebody digging and they hit the cable. And in this situation, let's imagine that the backhoe has damaged that top strand, but not the bottom strand. Would these switches have any way of knowing that their interconnection was damaged? Switch SW1, it can still transmit traffic, and it would not know if that traffic got dropped, and SW2 would not know that the traffic got dropped because it never knew that it was getting the traffic. SW2, it could send traffic, it's being received by SW1. How are these switches to know that something's wrong? Well, that's where a Cisco proprietary feature called UDLD, Unidirectional Link Detection, comes in. UDLD is a Layer 2 technology, and it's going to allow Cisco switches enabled for UDLD to communicate with one another at Layer 2. They're going to use a well-known MAC address of 01000CCCCCCC. And different models of Cisco devices use different intervals for sending out a UDLD message, but usually it's on the order of about 15 seconds. And when a switch sends a UDLD message to the far end device, it expects that UDLD message to be returned. And if it's not returned, that can be the indication to the switch that something's wrong, that we might have a unidirectional link. And if we do have a unidirectional link, what the switch can do, it can put that port into an error disable state, where the switch is not going to consider that port for forwarding traffic. And you might remember from your CCNA studies that we could logically bundle together multiple physical links into an ether channel. Well, the great thing about using UDLD with an Ether channel is that if we detect we have a unidirectional link on one of those physical connections making up the Ether channel bundle, the switch is not going to put the entire bundle into an error disable state. It's only going to put that one physical port into an error disable state. And when we're setting up UDLD, we have a couple of different modes that we can configure. There is a normal mode. And with normal mode, if a switch detects what it believes to be a unidirectional link on one of its ports, it's just going to mark that port as having an undetermined state. And also, it's going to generate a syslog message. But in the aggressive mode, which is the recommended mode to use most of the time, with aggressive mode, if a switch believes that it has a unidirectional link on one of its ports, it's going to send a UDLD message every second for eight seconds. And if it never sees any of those UDLD messages return to itself, it's going to place that port into an error disable state. Now, let's go out to a live interface and see how to configure and verify unidirectional link detection on a Cisco Catalyst switch. Let's take a look at how to configure UDLD on this switch. This is switch SW2 in this topology, and it's a Cisco Catalyst 3560 series switch, and it mainly has copper ports. I've only got a couple of fiber ports. I've got a couple of gigabit fiber ports. And uh, when we've been talking about UDLD, our focus was on fiber, but please realize even though we normally do use UDLD with fiber ports, it can be used with copper ports. Let's take a look at how to configure it. We can go into global configuration mode and enable UDLD globally with the command UDLD, and let's use some context sensitive help. The message option, by the way, this is how we could set the interval, how often in seconds are we going to be sending out a UDLD message. We've got a couple of other options, aggressive and enable. Enable is going to enable the normal mode of UDLD, or we could say aggressive, which is the recommended option. But when we press enter, notice what's going to happen. It's only going to enable UDLD on fiber ports. Same thing if we said enable. 
It's only going to apply to fiber ports if we turn this on globally. The recommendation from Cisco is that we do turn on UDLD globally as opposed to doing it on an interface by interface basis, but realize if you do that, it's only going to enable UDLD for fiber ports. I'll show you how to turn on UDLD for a fiber or copper port in interface configuration mode in a moment. But for now, let's say that we've globally enabled it and we can do some verification. We can do a show UDLD and you can see that for my copper ports, like fast ethernet 0 slash 1, fast ethernet 0 slash 2 and on and on, there is no UDLD enabled. But if we get down toward the bottom of our listing, we'll see that we've got a couple of fiber ports. And for these fiber ports, they are enabled for UDLD. And you can see that we're enabled in aggressive mode. What if I wanted to turn this on for a copper port, however? Let's say Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. Or you could turn it on for a fiber port this way as well. How could I do that? But let's go into interface configuration mode for Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. And we could say in interface configuration mode, UDLD port. And I could press enter to turn on UDLD in normal mode for this port. Or I could give the keyword of aggressive. Let's do that. And now I've enabled it for this copper port, Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. Let's do a show run. And we can see that Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 has that UDLD command. The other Fast Ethernet ports do not. The fiber ports do not, but they inherited that configuration based on the global configuration that we did. And if I do my verification by saying show UDLD, we'll see that Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1, it is enabled in aggressive mode, while the other copper ports are not enabled. And let's say that we did experience some backhoe fade. There was some sort of damage maybe to our fiber optic cable plant, and we think we've resolved the issue, the fiber has been repaired. If I want to reset all of the ports that have been put into an error disable state because of UDLD, I can give this command. I can say UDLD reset. And by the way, we have no ports in that error disable state thanks to UDLD at the moment. But if I did, this UDLD reset command, that would have the same effect as me going into an interface and doing a shutdown followed by a no shutdown. That's a look at how we can configure UDLD globally for fiber ports in interface configuration mode for fiber or copper ports, how we verify UDLD, and how we reset ports that have been error disabled because of UDLD.